Hey, this is it right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we done, we done got to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna, uh, this message right here is going to be a teaching. Uh, yeah, it's a teaching, man. It's, uh, it's my theory and you know, you know, I'm finna walk you through the word on the, uh, not the pre-tribulation rapture, but the post-tribulation rapture. The rapture and the second coming back to back. You know what I'm saying? That's my belief. But I'm finna walk you through the word. You know what I'm saying? Don't take it from me. I'm finna walk you through this book. You dig? And then everybody can have their own belief. But whatever you gonna believe, man, find it in the word. Let me pray. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you uh, for your revelation, for the gift of a personal, intimate relationship with you. Thank you for forgiving our sins, covering us in your blood, cleansing us. Um, I just ask you to give me your words, your thoughts, your message, lead me and guide me as I teach this thing. Uh, let it be you uh, speaking through me, saying what you have to say and, and not just me. Uh, may it be the spirit of you, Lord, speaking through me. May I open up my mouth and speak as your oracles. Uh, let it be you speaking through me, saying what you have to say. I just ask you to have your way and help me to bring out this word, uh, what I feel like you showed me and taught me and helped me to, oh, I feel it. I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, help me to bring it out and make it clear and make it plain and put these scriptures together. Uh in Jesus name. It's kind of like a puzzle. See, check this out. When it comes to certain subjects, you got to look at everything that the Bible got to say about it or, you know, almost everything. Cause you know, you, you, you might not, you might think you knew it all, but it was still some hidden stuff in the word. So I ain't going to say everything, but you got to look, you got to search the whole Bible for the subject. And then you got to put it all together. And then you got to remember it's an old covenant and it's a new covenant. And a lot of stuff from the old applies to the new, but it's a lot of stuff that don't apply. Uh, there was old covenant that you can't really bring into the new covenant and try to force on somebody as if it's a black or white sin. Tattoos, for instance. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's old covenant. It says no markings on your on your body and all that, but... Under the new covenant, you don't really see that. Now, don't get me wrong. Your body is, is the temple of the Holy Ghost and, and all that. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I don't think tattoos are a sin. It's not. It don't necessarily bring glory. To, I'm talking about Christians getting tattoos. Like, it doesn't glorify God. You know what I mean? Unless it's, you know, something godly. But you ain't got to rep God with a tattoo, you know, you rep God with your lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? The way you treat people, all that kind of stuff. That's how you demonstrate God. But if somebody want to get a tattoo or something, it's not a sin. Now that was old covenant when they were marking and all that, you know what I'm saying? But that that's, if you really break down the covenants, that's not, that's not really a law. You, Paul never really addressed it. Um, you know, you don't want to harm your body. Your body is the temple, so you don't want to do stuff that's going to tear down your body, but it's not really a sin. It's probably up to the person. God, I don't think God tripping if you want to get a tattoo. You know what I'm saying? That's, I would say that's old covenant somewhere, and I don't remember where it said, probably Deuteronomy, or it say something about no markings on your flesh. You know what I mean? Um, but that that's old covenant. You know what I mean? Uh, the new covenant is at the end of the day, it come down to loving God and loving people. And don't get me wrong. You, you see all them lists of sins that say people ain't going to inherit the kingdom, but tattoos is not on that list. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, to, to each his own, really, you know what I mean? That's, that's minor stuff. We, we not majoring in no minor stuff. You know what I'm saying? That, that ain't what my ministry about, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, though, you know what I'm saying? You got to look at the whole Bible. For instance, I use this example all the time, prayer. 
Uh, you know, there's one scripture where it say pray in the name of Jesus and God going to give it to you. But then there's other scriptures where it say he grants you the desires of your heart. Uh, what th- Psalm 37, four, but that, that, that goes two ways. That means he'll fulfill your desires, but that also means he'll give you godly desires for you to ask him and then he'll do it. You know what I mean? Then it's another one. I think first John five thirteen fourteen 14, somewhere around there. If it be the will of God, then he going to hear you. And if he hear you, he going to do it. And then somewhere in Mark, probably Mark 11, he say, when you pray, you got to forgive. Then he say, when you pray, you got to believe that you going to get what you receive. Then he said, when you praying, you got to forgive if you holding a grudge against somebody. You know what I mean? So you can't just take one thing and run with it. You got to, you got to put that thing together like a puzzle. And it's other subjects like that. For instance, the rapture. Now the rapture is when the saints meet Jesus in the air. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but hey, hey, let me, let me say this about the pre-tribulation rapture, man. This, I thought about this, man. I was like, if nobody would have ever told me about the pre-tribulation rapture, would I read the Bible and come to that conclusion? No, I would never read the Bible and come up with that if it wasn't somebody putting that in my head. Like, that's the difference between uh, uh, a scholar, uh, uh. Well, I don't know what I'm going to say, but it does, it's a, it's a term. It's it's like a term, a Bible term, like a Bible, like if you go to Bible school or something like that, it's a term called exegesis and eisegesis. Now, eisegesis is when you already, you're, you're reading something into the scripture. This is like when somebody already told you something and you got a preconceived notion and then you trying to make the scripture line up with what some with what you already got in your head instead of reading the word and trying to get out from the word what the word is saying you trying to draw it out you trying to pull out what the word is saying that's exegesis but then you got eisegesis which is when you already got an idea and you're you're reading the word trying to back up the idea that you already got in your mind i got a great example some people might get mad People say that Jesus was black. Okay, now check this out, though. Check this out. This ain't what the argument is about, but I'm going to make a point, though. So if you already got that in your mind that Jesus is black, these the scriptures you're going to run with. Uh, His hair hair was was wool, right? His hair was like wool. Okay, so you already feel like Jesus black, right? So then you, you, oh yeah, he got her like wool. That, that, that's how I heard he is. You know what I'm saying? Thick, all that. Uh, and then, uh, his feet was, was like bronze, which is brown, but really that's his spiritual body. But anyway, if that's the argument, yeah, his feet was bronze. You know, that's the color of us. He was black. So if you got that in your mind, you going to read certain scriptures and you going to back up what you got in your mind, you're going to back up your idea with them certain scriptures. But in reality, that's his glorified body. Second Corinthians chapter five. He said, we don't even know him according to the flesh. You know what I mean? He's in the spirit. He got a spiritual glorified body. We don't even know him in the flesh no more, but he did that work. He put that work in. You know what I mean? Die for us, pop back up. You know what it, I, <laughs> but say, man, uh, but, but that's an example. Now, personally, I think Jesus was the same color as them folks in Israel today. You got some of them this lighter tone. You got some of them this darker tone. But for the most part, they they mid-level, they they uh medium complected. You know what I'm saying? Just like the Palestinians and the uh Israelites and the Jews that's over there now, the, the color of their skin, I think that's what Jesus was. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna try to get complicated. I ain't going to make him white. I ain't going to make him black. He's a Jew. He was an Israelite of the stock of Israel. Come on, man. You know what I mean? But like I said, you got some darker skinned ones. You got some light skinned ones that look white. You got some dark skinned ones that look like they might be uh like the same skin tone of Hispanic or something like that. You know what I mean? And 
you, you know, you got the the in between. You know what I mean? So kind of like, kind of like, I'm gonna say Boricua, kind of like, you know, what I'm saying like a Puerto Rican skin tone. You know what I mean? But uh, maybe a little darker. You know, but the the color of them people over there, man. I think that's what Jesus was, cause he came in the race of Israel as an Israelite. Right, right. We ain't finna focus on that, but I was just making a point though. How if you already got some in your head, you are gonna try to back it up with scripture. That's how I feel about the pre-tribulation rapture. And I used to be, I used to believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. You know what I mean? I got a whole mixtape about it. I got a, I, I got a mixtape called the Final Hour. That was about the pre-tribulation rapture. But I, I got a mixtape uh, called First Flight Out. That was about the whole, that whole mixtape was about the pre-tribulation rapture. Now, I ain't going to say the final hour. That was kind of along the same thing. But, uh, yeah, I got a mixtape called uh, First Flight Out. It's all about the pre-tribulation rapture. You know what I mean? But like I said, it, it all started. But but I was already thinking about it. It's only two people I know who preach post-tribulation rapture. That's uh, uh, Prophet Sadhu Sundar Selvaraj, Prophet Sadhu or Brother Sadhu, S-A-D-H-U, Selvaraj, S-E-L-V-A-R-A-G, Sundar, S-U-N-D-A-R. I might've got his names mixed up, but it's him and, and, and Brother Pat Robertson. You know what I mean? From the 700 Club. He the, them the only two I heard preach post-tribulation rapture. Everybody else preach pre-tribulation but then I was like, if nobody ever told me that and I just read the word, there's no way I would come up with a pre-tribulation rapture. I wouldn't. There's no way I would come up with a seven year tribulation. See, this is tradition. Tradition is cool, but it, it got to be sound doctrine. It got to line up with the word. That stuff don't really line up with the word. No disrespect to all the uh, religious leaders, pastors, and fivefold ministry, and uh, everybody who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. My mom is is real tough. We can't even really talk about it because <laughs> we just have to agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? She going to stand firm on hers. She ain't really trying to hear nothing I got to say. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm going to stand firm on mine. I'd I be, I be like, mama, uh -uh, let, let's just agree to disagree. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We do, I know where you stand and, and I stand where I stand. But see, here's the danger, though. See, if you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, though, and say the mark of the beast come out, you know what I'm saying? And, and you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, so you're not going to believe that the mark of the beast is the mark of the beast because you're going to be like, nah, we're going to be raptured out of here before the mark of the beast. So if you not raptured out of here and the mark of the beast come, you not going to think it's the mark of the beast because you believe that the church is going to be raptured up out of here. So that you could end up in a vulnerable position. And the mark of the beast come and you like, nah, that can't be the mark of the beast because the church is going to be raptured out of here before that. And you know what I'm saying? And then you be in a state of confusion and you know, if God don't really help you, you know, you're going to be, you be done took the mark, not knowing it's the mark or not, you know what I mean? Believing in something that ain't going to happen, <laughs> but let me break it down with the word. Cause I can talk all day, but let's get into this book, man. So let, let, let okay. I'm going to start off. This is now I, I really got some other stuff, man. This is really a long teaching. I'm going to try to, it's probably going to be two hours easy. But uh, I got three little points, man. I'm going I'm to talk about the, the post-tribulation rapture, and I'm going to give you the, the backup, and then the judgment at Christ's return. Like, it depends on what side you on, but the Bible make a whole lot of references to the second coming of Christ being, like, not a happy day. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the day when uh, the fire and the brimstone hit Sodom and Gomorrah the day when the flood hit the earth in Noah's time. Like it's a, the second coming of Christ is a time of judgment. Now, if you his and you in right standing with the Lord, then you, it's all good. But it's a lot of people who going to be out of pocket with the Lord. So it's, it's a day of judgment. You know what I mean? It's a day of judgment. You know, uh, I think the book of John, man, when it talk about perfect love, casting out fear, 
it's really talking about the 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 coming of Christ. How either you're gonna be happy to see him and it's gonna be a beautiful thing, or you're gonna be in fear, you're gonna be terrified, and it's not it's a time of judgment and you're not on the right side. So it's it's really gonna be a lot of death and destruction and judgment in that day. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about the three and a half year tribulation. It's like four, five references to a three and a half year tribulation. And it's only one reference to a seven year period. And it's not even saying it's a seven year tribulation. It's saying that it's a covenant or a contract or some type of agreement that some world leaders is going to make. And then somebody in the, in the middle of it is going to switch up. You know what I mean? So even that is three and a half. You know what I mean? So that that seven year tribulation, like, cause, and and don't get me wrong, uh, when we talk about the great tribulation, we talk about worldwide because it's already people going through tribulation right now. It's people going through a tribulation period right now. It's a whole bunch of tribulation in the earth right now. It's Christians being persecuted. You know what I'm saying? Tribulation right now. You know what I'm saying? But we talk about the great tribulation. We talk about worldwide persecution of Christians and anybody that's not going to take that mark and, and all that there. So, and you only see three and a half, 42 months, uh, 1,260 days. It's a whole lot of references, a time, times, and half a time. Come on, man. Let's get into the book, man. That's one thing. You know, I'm not, I'm not stuck on tradition at all. It, it, I got to get it from the word that pre-tribulation rapture. That's a tradition that's been taught and passed down. But if you really look at the word, you really don't see that. You really don't see that. You know what I'm saying? You got people using scriptures, trying to back that up. Like God has not appointed us to wrath. The wrath is hell. You know what I'm saying? The church is called to tribulation, man. Acts 14, 22, man. He said, uh, we must enter into the kingdom through much tribulation. Peter said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, he means with difficulty. Why? Because tribulation, persecution. He said, judgment must begin at the house of God. That's not God judging the people of God. It's God making a judgment to allow persecution to hit his body. It's God making a judgment to allow persecution to come on his people from the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what that judgment, you, you got to study your word. Hey, I told you I started off reading, then I started studying. Because everything is, everything, I'm telling you, stuff can be better translated and better explained. You got to study, though. The Bible, it'll, you'll never get bored with the Bible, though. The Bible just go deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper. I'm telling you, man. And the, man, then, yeah, I'm telling you, man, that Bible, that's a cold book, boy. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a book from God, man, for real. Okay, but check this out, man. We talking about the pre, nah, 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 post-tribulation rapture, man. And I, I got to give you the word. It all started with John chapter 6. John chapter 6. I'm going to read these. Oh, yeah, I got all my stuff. I got all my notes. You did really I ain't got no notes, but I just got a whole bunch of scriptures. So we finna walk this thing out. Now I'm going to start off. My beginning point is going to be that the resurrection is on the last day. That's my first point that I'm trying to make. And then we're going to find out that the judgment is at the last day. Um, so the resurrection is on the last day. The judgment is on the last day. The coming of Christ is on the last day. So where does all this seven year the church is taken out and seven? Where does, okay. Somebody got to show me where that came from. It sounds good, but when you really, I can't really find it in the word though. Once I get away from tradition and what people talk, I really can't find it in the word though. Cause people get to running through that thing and get you a couple of scriptures and hold up though. <laughs> hold up though. You did. Okay. And that's the importance. Cause like I said, man, if you, you'll be thinking that all the chips in your hand and whatever, you'll think all that stuff is cool and you ain't got to worry about that. Cause the church going to be taken out of here and 
That's not that's not the case. Okay. Now, the first point, resurrection on the last day. It was in John chapter 6 four times. And I just got stuck. Like, what the? Like, God, what you trying to say? You know what I mean? And it led me. Okay. All right. Enough storytelling. All right. John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing. Watch this. But should raise it up again. When? At the last day. Okay, and then somebody will say, uh, watch this, somebody will say this right here. Well, uh, when he come back for the church and the dead, uh, in, when when he come back and, and take the church, that's the last day. Well, how's that the last day? If it's seven more years, you still got other people getting saved in the tribulation period. How can that be the last day? That's a stretch. That's a stretch, too much of a stretch. Okay, and this is the Father's will which have sent me, that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. So that lets you know the resurrection is on the last day. Verse 40, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Raise them up. That's resurrection on the last day. Verse 44. No man can come to me except the father which have sent me draw him. Uh-huh. That's deep right there. Watch this. And I will raise him up at the last day. That's resurrection. That's last day. Okay. Verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. Now, what that means is to believe on Jesus. Ain't no cannibalism and all that. That just means to believe on Jesus. Whoso eateth my flesh, you believe who he is in the flesh. He was the son of God. He was fully human. He came in the flesh. But by spirit and by blood, he was God. That's why his blood. Uh, is the atonement for our sin, sinless blood. Couldn't be sinless blood unless he was God because every human got that sin in us. Okay, okay, okay. Now, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Watch this. And I will raise him up at the last day. So he don't want you being confused at all. The last day is the day of the resurrection. Okay, let's groove. Let's move. <laughs> First Corinthians 15, man. You already know where I'm going. First Corinthians 15. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And then there's some other stuff too, though. Okay, so we got that out the way, right? Resurrection on the last day. Okay, let, let, let me hit you with this. I'm finna go on and, uh, and hit you with the judgment on the last day. I ain't put this in my notes. I don't know how I... Oh, yeah, I missed it. I don't know how I missed that. Okay, but give me John chapter 12. Oh, no, no, I think I had it later on in this teaching. But I'm going to go and throw it in right now. So we know about this last day thing, right? Okay, now check this out. John 12, 48. Jesus is saying, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Watch this. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him when? In the last day. So the resurrection is on the last day and the judgment is on the last day. All right, now let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Familiar scriptures when it comes to this subject. 1 Corinthians 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listening too much uh, hun honeycomb bracey. <laughs> All right, check it out though. First Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Uh, behold, I show you, I show you, I show you King James. But anyway, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is the time of the resurrection. See, everybody is going to be people alive when he, okay, okay, okay. All right. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Remember that last trump too. For the trumpet, remember this trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, here go the resurrection, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption. The natural had to put on the spiritual for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay, so the resurrection is at the last day. The the dead in Christ, did it say that or is that Thessalonians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dead shall be raised, resurrection, last day. And then it says, those who are alive and we shall be changed. Whoever is alive at his coming, whoever is, is with God, whoever is saved, whoever is a child of God, at his coming, if you're still alive, then you'll be changed and and taken up, right? Okay. I think that's that, that's plain, right? Okay. Now let's slide over to 1 Thessalonians. You're going to see something about that last trump again. So we're talking about the same thing. And remember, it's on the last day. And that don't make no sense if you got seven more years, God's still working, people still getting saved. How can it be the last day? Because somebody going to try to say, well, it's still the last day, even though it's seven more years. Come on, man. That, nah. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Y'all already know this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. There go that trumpet again. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then here it is again. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Now, this is what I believe. I believe Christ come down from heaven and he's in the sky, he's in the air, and then his people going to be gathered up to him and we're going to meet him in the air and then we're going to come to the earth as a unified army or family or however you want to look at it. That, that's what I believe. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people say the Lord going to be in the air, he going to take the church, he going to pop out, he going to be in, in, the, in the sky, in the air. He going to take the church and then he going to duck back off in heaven with all of us for seven years. Like, I just, I just, I just, I can't go for that. You know what I mean? But it's the Bible why I can't go for that. It ain't because I just want to be difficult or want to go against the grain with all these other folks teaching. I just want to be difficult or be devil's advocate. And I promise you, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's see what else. Okay, okay, this word get deep too. This word get deep too. Let's go to Matthew 24. <laughs> Let's go to Matthew 24. And, 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 and now we finna talk about this tribulation thing, man. If the tribulation is before the resurrection and all that, because remember the resurrection on the last day. The 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 when he take his saints, he gonna resurrect them and and, and they gonna be changed and meet them in the air. Is all this before the tribulation or after? Right? That's the question, right? That's what I'm trying to show you. Matthew 24. See this Bible, you gotta take, you gotta take it in. That that's how you uh uh uncover a mystery. When God reveal it to you, you take different pieces and you put it together, and oh, okay, I got a clear understanding now. Okay, but anyway, Matthew 24, verse 21 and 22. Okay, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Now, this is what I believe. If Christ didn't come, if Christ don't come when he do come, It'd be so much killing. And you got to think about it. You talking about nations going to war with nations. And really at the end time, they really going to be trying to annihilate Israel 
and any Christians, but especially Israel. Israel going to be the hot seat of the persecution, but it's going to be on all Christians worldwide. It's going to be on anybody that ain't taking that mark, that mark of the beast and submitting to that persecution on everybody. Everybody that's not down with the program, the new world order, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that ain't down with that is persecution, especially Christians, because we're going to be the main ones uh, not going along with it because what we have in the word, you know what I mean? So, um, oh yeah, but I believe that like if Christ didn't come when he did, like uh, the world would probably just blow each other up. Everybody with uh, atomic weapons and all that, like nobody would be alive. People would literally, everybody would kill each other. One nuclear weapons and all that one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we literally kill each other. So, like we'd wipe each other out. You know what I'm saying? This side got atomic weapons. That side got atomic weapons. Like we'll, we'll blow each other up for real. Like our life would be gone. Like we'll literally kill each other. You know what I'm saying? With these nuclear weapons, if Christ don't come when he came, you know what I'm saying? But for the elect's sake, he come when he did and, 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 and came before we just totally destroyed each other. You know what I mean? With no flesh, uh, uh, be saved physically saved. Cause you can have all the nuclear weapons in the world that ain't going to stop you from being saved spiritually, but like to not die a physical death, like everybody would die a physical death. Cause we blow each other up. You know what I mean? If Christ didn't come when he came, it wouldn't be no physical life remaining. You know what I mean? So for the elect's sake, you know what I'm saying? Those days were shortened. Okay. That's just one thing. Let's go to 29 through 31. Okay. Immediately. Okay. So he talking about the tribulation. He talking about false Christ, false prophets. Uh, and then, you know, people saying he, Christ is here. He's over there. But he's saying, when I come, everybody going to know I came. It ain't going to be no kind of secret. It's lightning uh, from the East shows in the West lightning strike in the West and you can see it in the East. Everybody going to see me when I come, you know what I mean? So don't be deceived. Okay. Now check this out. Verse, uh, verse 29 immediately after, not before he already told you, this is the great tribulation since it haven't ever, ain't never been no tribulation like this in the world up until this point. So I think we can all agree that is the great tribulation. What the words say though, immediately after, not before, but after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Talking about stars, the uh, uh, sun, moon, stuff like that. The powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then verse 30 shall appear the sign of the son of man, Jesus in heaven. And then remember what I said about the second coming. It's, it's a day of uh, like if, if you on his side, it's a good day. But if you not on his side, it's a day of judgment and wrath. So check this out. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man. Now, some people might mourn uh, cause of like remorse. Like I think it say somewhere in Zechariah, the Jews going to be mourning Ze Zechariah 12 or 13. Cause of, you know, cause they, they had uh, rejected him the first time. You know what I mean? So it might be some mourning cause of remorse, but it's going to be mourning, weeping and gnashing the teeth cause people up against that judgment. And, and it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be good. You know what I mean? Okay. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They crying, they wailing. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So this is the second coming. But watch this. <laughs> and he shall send his angels. Uh-oh, here it is again with a great sound of a trumpet sound like the resurrection to me. And they shall gather his elect from the four winds from the one end of heaven to the other. Now to me, that sound like the rapture. It's not, it just didn't mention the resurrection. It just didn't mention the dead in Christ, which is going to rise first. But this looks like the gathering of the living, the ones that's going to be changed in an instant. That looked like the rapture to me. 
and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There go the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That sounds like the rapture to me. It just didn't mention the resurrection of the dead. But that's the rapture of the living. And we know the rapture and the resurrection go together. You know what I'm saying? So it, it sounds like the same to me. It sounds like it's after the tribulation. Uh, uh, what else we got? Okay, okay, that's it for right there. Uh, now, this, this, these last two, this is just something I kind of threw in. This, this is personal, like, personal interpretation. I ain't gonna lie. But it makes sense, though. Ain't nothing, I ain't gonna come up with nothing crazy. Like, check this out, though. John chapter 1. This is what I believe the interpretation of this scripture is. When he was talking to Nathaniel. He said, uh, um, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, you have to read the first part. Um, he says, but because I said unto thee, I saw thee. Un-. Matter of fact, let me go back. I'm going to go on, go back. John chapter one. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, start with verse 47. This is Nathaniel coming to Jesus. I think, uh, Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus. And Nathanael said, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, come and see, verse 46. Verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael come unto him and saith of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. So this man don't have no deception. He he, he say what he want to say. He, he You know what I'm saying? He, he not deceiving. He, he is who he is. He going to say what he feel. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't deceiving, trying to make you think. It's one thing when it's really something else. Ain't no guile, dishonesty, deception. Ain't none of that in him. Now, what Jesus saying about this guy. And Nathaniel said unto him, so Jesus gave him like a word of knowledge, like I seen you. Oh, I ain't, I'm, I'm getting ahead. <laughs> Nathaniel saith unto him, uh, whence knowest thou me? So Jesus already prophesying to him word of knowledge, like he know his character without actually knowing him. So that's spiritual. That's uh, uh, word of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or, or actually discernment, discerning the spirits, angels, demons, and the human heart, the human spirit. Okay. All right. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, saith of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile, no deception, no falsehood. Nathaniel saith unto him, whence knowest thou me? Where you know me from? You don't know me. Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, before he told you to come holler at me, when thou was under the fig tree, I seen you, seen him in the spirit. Now, Nathaniel answered and said, Rabbi, teacher, master, thou art the son of God. How you know that about me? Thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Believe you? You believe I'm the son of God just because of that? That's cool, though. I am the son of God. (laughs) You know what I mean? But that's all it took. Jesus talking. Okay. Then he said, uh, well, you're going to see greater things than these. And he said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter, after this,